Criterion B is probably the easiest criterion to score well on. It's worth four of the 20 marks and it's all about mathematical communication. That means notation, that means proofs, and that means diagrams. I've got seven top tips for you today about how you can score well in Criterion B. Number one is computer notation. Computer notation should absolutely be avoided. You shouldn't be writing things like X star Y. There is one exception, which is if you're doing a screenshot from some software and it uses that notation. It's absolutely essential that you do all of your equations with either an equation editor or latex if you're very advanced. Now, even if I'm talking about the letter X or the function inside the text, inside the paragraph, I'm still gonna make sure that every single X, every single letter is in math type. So that means every time I talk about X, I'm gonna click on the equation editor and put in X. Every single equation or math needs to be using math type from the equation editor. That's top tip number one, no computer notation. Top tip number two is you wanna be having various forms of mathematical representation. What is mathematical representation? Well, it's diagrams, it's tables, it's charts. So you wanna have a variation of these. We talked already in criterion A, but you wanna make sure that they're in an appropriate place. The reader isn't having to constantly flick back and forth to find them. My favorite place to create mathematical representation is GeoGebra, geogebra.org. It's absolutely fabulous. So top tip number two, lots of different mathematical representation. Top tip number three is your mathematical representation that we've talked about in tip two should be well-sized. So your graphs, for example, they should be easy to read. You should label both the axes, okay, including the units. Have you got seconds? Is your x-axis in terms of time? Is it seconds? So you should also label all the key features of your graph. For example, if I had a quadratic graph, I might label my x-intercepts, my y-intercepts, my max point. So your graph, is it easy to read? Okay, are the axes labeled and have all of the key features of the graph been labeled? Color coding can really help in this section because if you color code something, you can color code the text or the equation to match. That's also very useful. The next thing is to state your units and your accuracy. So top tip number four, how accurate is your data? For example, if we're talking about time, is it seconds, minutes, hours, years, millennia? State that. How many decimal points have you rounded to? Okay, give a reason for that. For example, if you've used three decimal places, why have you used three decimal places? The IB also really hates it if you've rounded and you still use the normal equal sign. When you've rounded, you should use the approximate sign and you can write in brackets to what degree you've rounded to. So top tip number four, state your accuracy, give a reason for it, make sure you use the approximate sign if you've rounded, and make sure you've stated the units that you're working with. My fifth tip is to make sure that each function has its own name. I mentioned this before, the IA about the two different balls. Well, in the first draft, both of the balls, the tennis ball and the paddle ball, were both called F. Each function should have its own name. So for example, you might wanna call your paddle ball P of X and your tennis ball T of X. Make sure each function has its own name. If you're gonna do a piecewise function, which means that you've got multiple functions that you're gonna restrict the domain and put them together to make a giant function, you might wanna do, for example, T sub one of X being the first bounce, T sub two of X being the second bounce, and in the end, you're going to write it as a piecewise function. Okay, so each function should have its own name. The sixth tip regards notation. Be very, very careful in your notation. For example, if n is a natural number, write n an element of n. We, I marked an IA this year that had a very complicated because it was all about the roots of unity and he'd solved lots of different equations. So he'd solved z cubed equals to one, that was three roots z4 equals to one, that was four roots. And he came up with a system where he called the roots, for example, if he wanted to find the second root when he sold z cubed equal to one, he would call that lambda sub three sub two. 
That was great notation because it made it really, really clear exactly which root he was referring to. So be very careful about your notation. Do your vectors have arrows on them? Are your matrices in braces? I marked an IA this year that had all of the matrices, but it didn't have the braces around the matrices. If you're stating a set, make sure you've used the curly brackets. All of those small things can be deducted in criterion B. My last tip for criterion B is to be careful about your proofs. You need to have a logical deduction of your proofs. So for example, if you're gonna do a proof by induction, state what is your base case? So your case when n is equal to one. Write your inductive hypothesis when n is equal to k. Then maybe you're gonna write your RTP. What are you trying to prove? You're gonna make sure that you include the correct statement at the end of your proof. So how are your proofs set out? Does the order in which you've done things make sense? Is it clear? So those are all my tips for mathematical communication. Like, subscribe, and in the next video, we're gonna be talking about Criterion C, personal engagement. Thank <laughs> you.